Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Jay Grew said he just bought two copies of Rat Snakes. So there nice! You go. There you go. Yeah! <laughs> A Jade Grew. Jay, you're the man! Yes, there you go. Um, uh, thanks for that, Jade. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Um, trying to see what other Patrick, did you have any, uh, you did, yeah, you got a super chat from Armament Maxis asking about, uh, okay. your opinions on Waco and Ruby Ridge. Yeah. Ah, I knew uh, that was coming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do that. that <laughs> right. Well, you're probably not going to like my opinions or your, your listeners. Let's hear it let's though. Let's go to Ruby Ridge first. Mm-hmm. They killed the U.S. Marshal. End of story. I don't care about his, you know, uh, white supremacist views or his anti-government views. You don't get to kill a U.S. Marshal ever. Now, did the, ulti- the, the original case turn out to be a case of entrapment or government misconduct apparently it was in the court of law that's all he had to do was come down the hill and have his case found out to be what it was and i'm just going by what i've read and what i understand they settled with him and what have you right this is a this is a multi-tiered story this is a multi-tiered story Mm -hmm. yeah you or what's your name me no patrick patrick yeah at no point, you or Patrick, and I serve an arrest warrant on you. Mm-hmm. You bail out and you say, "All right, here's my ten grand or or or. I'll be in court in thirty days." At no point do you not get to show up, mm-hmm. and at no point do you definitely not to get to kill a U.S. marshal. So that's all I'm going to say on Ruby Ridge. Um, Waco. That was a train wreck from beginning to end. I know all the players. I know how it happened. It was an embarrassment. It should have never happened. That being said, they had a lawful search warrant, albeit the tactics were questionable and the Treasury report is out there. They fillet us. Mm Mm-hmm. But all that being said, there was a lawful search warrant. You don't get to kill federal agents serving a lawful search warrant, ever, ever. Mm-hmm. You take your day in court, you get your lawyer, and blah, blah, blah. You don't get to shoot it out with the feds, ever. Okay. Now, let me, let, me, um, let me just do this follow-up, because Armament and Axe is the person who asked that question initially. He says, did they know he was a U.S. Marshal? I'm sure all of this has been investigated ad nauseum and is a public record or should they have known i'm reasonably certain based on the evidence and the testimony Mm -hmm. they will say they didn't know but they knew it was law enforcement Mm -hmm. and why did they know because he failed to appear had he appeared, none of that would have happened. Okay. So you're saying, well, he knew he was in trouble. Um, and then, so and I guess. And who else would be out in your woods mm-hmm. scoping out your house in camouflage and ninja gear mm-hmm. when you failed to appear for a federal firearms violation? Okay. I mean, come on. Right. Look, the common sense has to be applied. Right. So okay, so to so with Waco, you said that was uh, what were your exact words here? <laughs> that um, a I, train wreck. A train wreck. <laughs> yeah. <A> story. <laughs> okay. What? Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, real quick, just to get my mm-hmm. uh, timeline straight in my head, what year did you retire? When did you retire out? I retired in two thousand fourteen. Oh, so you were you were there for a lot of this? Mm-hmm. Like you were in Waco. Stuff. Yeah. So will you will you act? I, uh, and and I uh, I'm pretty sure I hit this already in the book. You weren't actually 
at Waco when everything went down, right? You were I was not, you were standby. I was not at Waco at the shootout. Okay, you weren't at the shootout. Oh. Okay. I'll give you I'll give you the the build up. Okay. Um each field division we had twenty we have twenty six now. I don't know. We may have had twenty four field divisions. Mm -hmm. Each field division had a SWAT team, an SRT. Mm -hmm. As part of that system, we were aware something was happening, but it was real hush hush. We weren't getting details, but we were put on standby. The morning I saw it on TV, just like everybody else. And then my beeper went off. We went, got on a C-130, went to Waco. Mm -hmm. So I was there probably on the March 3rd or 5th, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, by then it was a total story. FBI had assumed control and we took up the perimeter and blah, blah, blah. And then the fire ultimately happened. Mm-hmm. So what was your question in there? I got sidetracked. <laughs> I think that answered it. I think it was just yeah. what 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 part did you take in it? Yeah. Um, but yeah. For for me, it's it's good to know when you retired out. So you you've seen a lot a lot of changes. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots. Yeah. yeah. I saw I saw the first forty years, forty five years of this bureau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because when you so if it started in seventy two and you were going in, you went in early in the eighties, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, it was maybe going what eight or ten years or something like that before you right. before you went in. So you're probably like second gen. The the, the first gen I of was, dudes. I was second generation. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah, but those first gen of dudes, those are like cavemen. You're like, you know, starting to live in mud huts or something now. And, but you but you've seen a lot like a massive leap of what was going on over at the ATF over those uh, several generations there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So And you know what? In mm -hmm. in retrospect, Waco was a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. There was like four hundred and eighty two ways to handle that and we picked four hundred and eighty three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean we picked it up on a lot of levels but that doesn't mean we were wrong mm -hmm. the bottom line is those people were buying up hand grenades automatic weapons auto sears for their guns they were amassing for the apocalypse mm -hmm. and they got it yeah um and, and as you've said here there just might have been a better way to go about this knowing that they were like no women doubt. and kids um, involved in this armament and axes. I'm going to keep following up with him here. He says, uh, I lived my life over many years watching this on the news. Never know what to believe uh, from mainstream media. Of, of course, you know, um, but you you were there. Now, obviously, you're on your side and, you know, and I think people have to give you like they have to understand that you guys and I know some people hate this, <laughs> but you guys are brothers in arms. You're doing a job together, right? You've got to rely on each other, right or wrong. But I don't think, I do not think mm -hmm. that there was an overwhelming majority of ATF people that thought Waco was a good plan. Mm -hmm. And when we lied about it and tried to cover up, mm -hmm. um, it just made it worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 hope wouldn't, I wouldn't have done the operation. True story. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there. The morning where I got the page, when the operation was happening and the shootout happened, mm -hmm. and before I got that page and before I hit the TV, I was at my in-law's house with my kids, with grandma and grandpa's, and having fun. Mm -hmm. And he gets a newspaper every day, and I opened up the newspaper and I saw the um, the article about David Koresh, mm -hmm. the Access of Evil, or whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. And I knew what it was about because we've been briefed minimally. Mm -hmm. And I knew something was going down in Texas. And I saw that story and I looked at that compound and I said, please tell me they're not even thinking about hitting that. There's, that's nothing good can happen out of that. And I'll be damned if 15, 20, 30 minutes later, my beeper went off. The TV was splashing the shootout on there. And mm -hmm. I went, they went for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, I know the players. I know mm-hmm. the architects of Waco. Mm-hmm. And they were not going to abort that mission for anything. They, they, they had stars in their eyes of the biggest law enforcement raid ever. Instead of going, yeah, we'll maybe compromise, let's stand down and check this out further and whatever. So, mm-hmm. so they were the people in charge were a bit of, uh, would you say, glory hounds looking? Yes. Looking they put stars on the badges. For mm-hmm. lack of better word, um, I don't need to say their names. They're in the Waco report. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they. This they were all twenty year guys. They were soon to retire in a couple of years, and this was their big hit, the biggest law enforcement raid in history. And they just couldn't say no. Yeah, when you look at even though those people needed to be mm-hmm. like taken down. Yeah, it seems like there was a job to be done there, but the job wasn't necessarily, or that part of the mission wasn't executed properly. I think everyone looking at that was probably like, oh, yeah. w- w- like what the hell's happening here? Well, How can this anti- go so badly wrong? anti-government or uh, 3%er went, aha, see, mm-hmm. the federal government is out there to get you, mm-hmm. which is not our job. But it sure was a bad visual. So, so I guess this is a good segue for a personal question, if okay. you don't mind me asking. Um, so, I my YouTube channel and my my pastime, I build guns. Like that's my hobby. Is I enjoy building stuff. Cool. What sort of list can I expect to be on? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, I'm assuming you have a manufacturer's license. So no, so I build I build all of mine just for personal use. So it's all okay. it's all just basic personal use. You're not but, on any list. You shouldn't be on any list. Uh, if you start selling them, you yeah. people start contracting you to build a three three eight the Pua or some. Just get a license. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you're just making for your own yeah. enjoyment, mm-hmm. rock on, brother. Yeah. This is America. <laughs> I hate to sound <laughs> like a lawyer, but we follow all applicable laws. Yes. I know okay. that. We are law-abiding <laughs> citizens. I'm an FFL. I have an FFL SOT. Okay, what's your FFL number? Um, <laughs> Talk loud. No, 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 no. What's no, your FFL no, number? I'm no, sorry. That's all right. Uh, Winnebago. Hello. Winnebago. 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 Move. Hit them now. Hit them now. Did you have? Oh, were there code words that you guys had for like yeah. sending guys in? Was Winnebago like a code word or something? Is that a thing? Dude, that's a funny story. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of the undercover tapes. When we, when you go through the ATF Academy, you got blocks of instruction. Firearms laws, mm-hmm. alcohol laws, explosives. Mm-hmm. Then you do the undercover program. One of the videos was literally Winnebago, Winnebago. So we always joke about it. <laughs> because that, that was in our training. I always used Joey Buttafuoco. <laughs> really? That was your code? You're not Joey. the only person who used Joey Buttafuoco. Joey well, B. the reason I did is I knew no matter how drunk I was <laughs> or, or oh how scared I was mm-hmm. or how crazy the situation was, I would never say Joey Buttafuoco unless I meant to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Buttafuoco, man. A guy who will live in infamy. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Let's see. Uh, My wife just got home from work. She's a nurse at a local hospital. And she picked up McAllister's for dinner. Oh, look at that. that. (laughs) Yeah, he's he's doing overtime duty here. So um, (laughs) there's a couple of things. uh, Does he get paid for this? Hell no. (laughs) No. Listen, we give him free T-shirts every now and then. You get paid for it, right? <laughs> uh, who me? Minimally. Yeah, I yeah you know. Listen, I think so. It, the the financial side of this, we do enough to keep it going. Like I'm nice. actually in a studio here, which we got to rent the studio, and there's a whole bunch of expenses and all that kind of stuff involved in it. But there's folks out there who help support us. We have uh, people that uh, sponsor, like Harry's Holsters that I was talking about, and other folks. Nice. To help us out and we're able to pay for it you know and keep it going so as long as i could do that i'm in it because the this whole thing interests me you know um mm-hmm. and, and i think that 
we all form our opinions based on our sides. And one of the things that I find like really, and I genuinely mean this, deeply interesting about this is we all form our own opinions. But the beautiful thing about being human beings is we get to talk to people like yourself. And we get to realize that, that a lot of times our opinions are very flat. They're not three-dimensional. And there, there's maybe other sides to the story. Whether we choose to agree with it or not, right? I'm sure there's people out there that, you know, uh, will, if they hate the ATF, they'll still hate it or whatever it is. I think that um, it's interesting to talk to someone on the other side of a lot of these situations and all the different things that you've seen and we've all watched play out um, on TV and in the news. It's interesting to me to do it. So uh, that's what keeps me going. A quick funny story. Mm -hmm. Because... ATF doesn't even know about this. Uh oh. Yeah. So in 1994, um, you remember the guy who does who's the uh, conspiracy, the alien guy? Oh, um, uh, Alex, Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones? <laughs> not before him. Oh, before Alex, um, Jones? Alex Jones. The radio dude. Oh, uh, not Rush Limbaugh. No, 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 I know who you're talking about. He did really? the. I know exactly who you're talking about, and I don't know his name. Anyway, okay. he was doing a, a radio cast at midnight to three in the morning or something. Mm -hmm. And he had this chick who did this documentary on Waco mm -hmm. and, like, showed all these conspiracy theories. See that shadow? That was the ATF agents going in, burning the compound down. See this? See that? And I was like, and so my mom's best friend, they're, like, 60 at the time, calls me and goes, you ought to listen to this guy. Oh, Art Bell, Coast to Coast. I, yep, mm -hmm. I believe I knew that one. Okay, so Art I Bell. listened to it one night, and this chick, a lawyer, Linda somebody, was on there, and just... Todd S. came up with that, too. Uh, spreading all kind of shit about Waco, and I was mm -hmm. like, oh my God, this ain't true. They said, you ought to call in. So I called in. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> He was like, how do I know you're an ATF agent? So we went through that whole song and dance. Mm -hmm. So he scheduled me and her to debate. And we were on for the, like the next six nights. And I was special agent X. Because <laughs> I was on the job. I, I was on the job. I didn't want to. You like, could have been Fox Mulder. <laughs> I could have been fired or whatever. Right. Oh, you were still, so, so you were still on like, the job. I was spending, sending all this bad mm -hmm. information out about Waco. So I called in and we did it for like three nights and I got all the, the cassette tapes upstairs. That's oh boy. Cool. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. Listen, man, uh, look, I, I really do recommend the book. I thought, like, when I started listening to the audio, I know you're not, like, super happy with the guy doing the audio. I think he's doing, I think he's doing a good job. He doesn't have a gravelly voice like yours. I don't know how you even... Uh, I'm assuming you weren't born with that voice, so... Never no, that was like 40 years of whiskey in Chesterfield. <laughs> Chesterfield, <laughs> okay. All right, I think people in the chat were, were trying to figure out exactly what you're smoking. Uh, I don't know if that's Chesterfield you're smoking right now. I have no idea. Um, but, you know, I thought... Listen, I think this is really interesting. I could see uh, people making a movie or something like that out of it at some point, if they're interested in doing that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I find the whole thing interesting and it's a it's a tough deal. Right. What happened in Waco is just really a tough deal. It's a it's a place where we in, in American history, lots of people messed up big time. And didn't you know, I think they didn't slow slow down what was happening there and try to figure out how to do that in a completely different way. No. Nope. Yeah. So. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.